Hello there. We're looking at changing the subject of a formula. So formulas can be written in a few different ways. They connect different variables together. Uh, this one, for example, connects a final velocity of an object, the initial velocity of an object, its acceleration, and the time it's taken to travel. But we may not want to find the final velocity. We may want to find the initial velocity or the acceleration. So we might want to rewrite it in a different form. And that's what changing the subject is. So for this one, I'm going to make A the subject because I might want to find the acceleration. It's a little bit like solving equations and just do things to both sides. So if I want to find, make A the subject, then the first thing I'm going to do is take away U from both sides. So if I take away U from the left hand side, we end up with V minus U. Taking away U from the right hand side gets rid of the U. I've got the fact that V minus U equals AT. So that's getting a bit closer to getting A as a subject, but A is being multiplied by T at the moment. So I'm going to divide by T. And if I divide by T on the right hand side, we get that. So now we've got A equals V minus U over T. And we have made A the subject. For this second one here, we've got um, x plus ay equals 3y. Now I want to make y the subject. The issue we've got is that we've got two y's, one being multiplied by a and one being multiplied by 3. First thing to do is to get them both on the same side with no other y terms with them. I'm going to take away a y from both sides. We'll take it away from the left hand side and then take it away from the right hand side. So what I've achieved is having y's on one side. I'm now going to factorize the right hand side. Because there's a y in both, I can take this outside of a bracket. And what I achieve is now I've only got one y in my formula when before there was two y's. Uh, y is being multiplied by this bracket, so I can just divide by that bracket and I end up with y equals x over 3 minus a. And I have made y the subject. The third one I've got is a bit trickier. Uh, what we want to do is make u the subject. Now, u is a denominator, as are the other variables in this particular equation. Um, I'm first going to deal with that by trying to add fractions. So if I want to add these fractions, I need a common denominator. And the easiest way to find a common denominator is to multiply these two together. So my common denominator is going to be vu. In order to get that from this fraction, I have to multiply top and bottom by u. And for this one, I'm multiplying top and bottom by v. So I've now got a common denominator. This one's vu, this one's uv, but they're the same thing because two things multiply together. It doesn't matter which order you do them. So if I just combine them together, I have this. Now I'm going to do some multiplying. I'm going to multiply both sides by uv to cancel out the uv on the bottom. But at the same time, I'm also going to multiply both sides by f to cancel out this on the bottom. So I've multiplied by both the denominators, which means the f has ended up being multiplied by this numerator here and the uv by this numerator here. Getting closer, but I need to expand the brackets because we're now aiming to do a similar thing to this one. So uf plus vf. So I've multiplied out the brackets. So I'm going to take away uf. And again, I'm going to need to factorize. 
and my u will come outside of those brackets. And then final step is I can divide by this bracket, giving me vf over v minus f, and that's equal to u. So that's rearranging formulae. I've taken three sort of more challenging examples. This is your ANA style work. Just want to show you a practical example of it. Here's the formula for converting degrees Celsius into degrees Fahrenheit. But it may be that you want to go the opposite way. So we're just going to try and rearrange this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is take away 32 from both sides. Then I'm going to need to multiply both sides by 5. And then divide everything by 9. And that gives you a formula where you can now convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. I hope that was useful. Uh, if it did find any of it tricky, go back and have a look at the more simplistic rearranging formula first and then maybe come back to this one.